Alejandro's small adobe house stood beside a lonely desert road. Beside the house stood a well and a windmill to pump water from the well. Water for Alejandro and for his only companion, a burro. It was a lonely place and Alejandro welcomed any who stopped by to refresh themselves at the well. But visitors were few, and after they left, Alejandro felt lonelier than before. To more easily endure the lonely hours, Alejandro planted a garden, a garden filled with carrots, beans, and large brown onions, tomatoes and corn, melons, squash, and small red peppers. Most mornings found Alejandro tending the garden, watching it grow. These were times he cherished, and he often stayed for hours, working until driven indoors by the desert heat. The days went by, one after another, with little change, until one morning when there was an unexpected visitor. This visitor came not from the desert road, but from the desert itself. A ground squirrel crept from under the bush. Moving warily over the sand, it hesitated and looked around. Alejandro paused, keeping very quiet as the squirrel approached the garden. It ran up to one of the furrows, drank its fill of water, and scampered away. After it left, Alejandro realized that for those few moments, his loneliness had been all but forgotten. And because he felt less lonely, Alejandro found himself hoping the squirrel would come again. The squirrel did come again, from time to time bringing along small friends. Wood rats and pocket gophers, jack rabbits, kangaroo rats, pocket mice. Birds, too, became aware of Alejandro's garden. Roadrunners, gila woodpeckers, thrashers, cactus friends, sage sparrows, morning doves and others came in the evening to perch on the branches of a mesquite bush or to rest on the arms of a lone seguro before dropping down for a quick drink before nightfall. Occasionally, even an old desert tortoise could be seen plodding toward the garden. Suddenly, Alejandro found that time was passing more quickly. He was rarely lonely. He had only to look up from his hoe or from wherever he might be at any moment to find a small friend nearby. For a while, this was all that mattered to Alejandro, but after a time, he wasn't so sure. He began asking himself if there was something more important than just making himself less lonely. It took Alejandro little time to see there was. He began to realize that his tiny desert friends came to his garden not for company but for water, and he found himself thinking of other animals in the desert. Animals like the coyote and the desert gray fox, the bobcats, the skunks, the badgers, and long-nosed coatis, the pacaris, sometimes called javelinas, the short-tempered wild pigs of the desert, the antlered mule deer, the does and the fawns. Finding enough water 
was not a problem. With his windmill and well, Alejandro could supply ample water for any and all. Getting it to those who needed it was something else. The something else, Alejandro decided, was a desert water hole. Without delay, Alejandro started digging. It was tiring work, taking many days in the hot desert sun. But the thought of getting water to so many thirsty desert dwellers more than made up for the drudgery. And when it was filled, Alejandro was pleased with the gift he had made for his desert friends. There was good reason to suppose it would take time for the larger animals to discover their new source of water, so Alejandro was patient. He went about as usual, feeding his burrow, tending the garden, and doing countless other chores. Days passed and nothing happened. Still, Alejandro was confident. But the days turned to weeks and it was still quiet at the waterhole. Why, Alejandro wondered. Weren't they coming? What could he have done wrong? The absence of the desert folk might have remained a mystery had Alejandro not come out of the house one morning when a skunk was in the clearing beyond the waterhole. Seeing Alejandro, the skunk darted to safety under the underbrush. It was, suddenly became very clear why Alejandro's gift was being shunned. Alejandro couldn't believe he had been so thoughtless, but what was important now was to put things right as quickly as possible. Waterhole number two was built far from the house and screened by heavy desert growth. When it was filled and ready, Alejandro waited with mixed emotions. He was hopeful, yet he couldn't forget what had happened the first time. As it turned out, he was not disappointed. The animals of the desert did come, each as it made its own discovery. Because the waterhole was now sheltered from the small adobe house and the desert road, the animals were no longer fearful. And although Alejandro could not see through the desert growth surrounding the waterhole, he had ways of knowing it was no longer being shunned. By the twittering of birds gathering in the dusk, by the rustling of mesquite in the quiet desert evening telling of the approach of a coyote, a badger, or maybe a desert fox, by the soft hoofbeats of a mule deer, or the unmistakable sound of a herd of peccaries charging toward the waterhole. And in these moments when Alejandro sat quietly listening to the sounds of his desert neighbors, he knew that the gift was not so much a gift that he had given, but a gift he had received. <laughs>